following episode contains language and descriptions of violence and self-harm. It may not be appropriate for all listeners, but it was my life. Discretion is advised. What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to another episode of Roll Call with Chappie. Uh, I got another treat for you guys. His episode went so nuts and everybody loved uh, everything you said so much. I got JC, Mr. Wrong Strong, back up in the studio today. I don't even know if you have to tell me your Instagram again, but do it. Tell him all your intros and stuff, please, bro. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is JC. I am Wrong Strong. And yeah, you could just find me under uh, Wrong Strong. It's, it's everything. You just Google it. There we go. Yeah, check out one of his six or seven TV shows, too. Um, so anyways, I did, I, we did our episode, man, and I got, literally, you got so much love. Um, I've done probably 25 episodes, and I think yours probably went more nuts than anybody's, and I was getting blown up for it, so I wanted to have you back on again, just get into the real, real details, and then you got some cool projects coming up. So people are very fascinated with the Mexican prison side of it, so I want to like get a, l- a little bit more details of how rough your life was in Mexico to show the full transformation, if you can. I mean, the worst parts. <laughs> it was all bad. I, I, you know, the, the part that I remember the most is a, a big black door because we pulled up and they just brought me in. And I was like, so where, where do I go? Like, where's my cell? Where's, you know, where's my uniform? I was 17 years old. Okay. And uh, the guard's like, buscale. He just go, you know, out go, of here. go find it. <laughs> yeah. And I... I started walking in. I mean, and most people that follow me already heard this part of my story. Uh, I mean, I was there for five minutes, and I, I got stabbed for my Jordans. Uh, I still thought I was a little tough, you know. I, t- I told them to try and take them, and they, they took them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I ended up in the hospital, but it, it, was, it was a lot. It was rougher for me because I was an American, so I, I was considered a, a traitor to, like, my people. Yeah. And... Uh, it, it and tell was, them how serious that type of stuff is in there too, because people don't even understand that they comprehend that type of politics shit. It, it's it's just serious because they they look at us like we're like fed with a gold spoon over here. They don't they don't know that like even growing up over here is still rough for us. It's like know? dudes. It's it's almost I would compare it to dudes in prison. How if you ain't walked your same shoes in prison, we don't think you you live that life, so we're not going to listen to you. It's the same type of shit, right? Like yeah. that fool don't know shit. He was in America. Yeah, and and they treat us like that. But I always tell people like if I wouldn't have been that young in the prime of my violence, uh, I wouldn't have made it because, you know, I, I, I got to see a lot of stuff that people shouldn't, shouldn't see, you know, um, people getting stabbed up, getting beat up. The worst, with, the worst is when they would play soccer because <laughs> all the kingpins would uh, buy, you know, their, their teams, uniforms. It was like top dollar. Everything yeah. was spent to, to make it like an all out just sport. Uh-huh. And they would get into huge fights, and they would start stabbing each other. Being like, it was just machetes would come out. Yeah, and it was it was a lot of violence. Do you still have uh, like flashbacks or anything from that type of stuff? I mean, I, I I used to have a lot of a lot of issues before I started my my walk with Christ. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm 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 a baby, you know. I got saved last year in November, but before that, um, I didn't really sleep. I mean, I think we, that's the time that me and you met, and uh, I yeah. slept maybe for like two hours. You're like, you get a lift in? You're like, yeah, how about 4 a.m. at my place? I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> no, it was 3 a.m. And you yeah, said no. 3 a.m., yeah. <laughs> I said 5. I'm like, I'll be halfway through my sleep at that point. There's no chance I'm going to be at 3 a.m., bro. You're crazy. So I, I would sleep maybe two hours, and, and there was a lot of paranoia. Yeah. Um, uh, I would get up and check my whole house. Uh, I even, still get that. I got, cam- I got cameras all around my house just because of that, bro. I was sitting at night in bed and just watch, so I hear noise, and, and I'm like, what am I scared of? It, it was it was even taking a toll on my wife because she was like, man, there's like, I wake, you wake me up. And I'm like all paranoid, you know, checking yeah. walls and stuff. And it, it just, it did a, a huge number on me emotionally just because I seen a lot of, I mean, even uh, there was a child molester that got there and he had been on the newspaper prior to him getting there that day. So when he came in, they were waiting for him, huh? They were waiting for yeah. him in front. All the guys with like pipes and, and sticks and yeah. and I just sat back and I just watched the whole thing. And and right when he came in, they started just beating him like it, it was it, it was almost like watching a cartoon. Yeah, because, it's in the movies for sure. Yeah, uh, it didn't even look real, mm-hmm. you know. And they got to the point where his hands were so. All his bones and his and his arms were broken, so he couldn't even put his hands down because it, it just looked like jello. Oh, I get like flashbacks uh, thinking about stuff. stuff so stuff like that. It, it was they came up behind him and they hit him with a machete in the back of his neck, and I mean that was like one of the sounds that stayed with me for a long time Dude, in yeah. my head. Uh, but yeah, it was 
it was it was rough in there, man. It was a whole different. It was a whole different experience. I still the one thing about me and. Bro, I still hear sounds from there, and like the one, one of the worst ones was when I, you know, I heard a dude full on screaming, saying he was dead, like stop stabbing me and stuff. And I like, I still, all that, like almost every day, I still hear that sound in my in my head. And uh, I talked to one of, the, you know, I ran into one of the youngsters that was, you know, doing stuff like that, and was there was there when that whole thing went down. And he fully changed his life now, has a family and kids. And I'd ask him, I was like, do you ever think about that stuff, or does it ever get in your head? He's like, bro, I hear that fool's voice every day, and I'm like, oh my gosh, me too. It's like. Part of it kind of, as bad as it is, part of it kind of helps me because it always puts me back and it, like, it makes me never where I f never forget where I come from. You know what I'm saying? So no matter how hard mm -hmm. it gets out here or how, how big the struggles are, it, make, you know, it makes me you know, never want to give up because I remember how shitty my life was and how, yeah. what I did come from. You know what I'm saying? And you're one of the greatest transformations I, I literally think of in uh, history of people that I've met, bro. My, my life really came together once. I, you know, I, I heard people, I heard all my friends especially, they're like, oh, man, like, you're a Jesus dude now? <laughs> and I'm Jesus like, dude, yeah. <laughs> I was like, look, I'm just telling you what he did for me because, like, I, I still, to this, I mean, I still can't believe it. Like, I went to doctors. I've been to psychiatrists. I've been I can't believe, bro. That's why I put you on my show twice. I'm not joking. Like, I've, I've been trying to get back on the God train because, you know, I, when my cousin passed away when I was in, um, most people know the story. When my cousin passed away when I was in maximum security prison, I had to find out, watch the news, and couldn't even make a phone call for, like, four or five days to call my family because you get one phone call in maximum yeah. security. And I gave up on God. And since I got out, I've had so much good stuff happen to me. I like wanted to get right back with God because I felt like I was like the one thing missing, but it's been tough. But like when a guy like me can see a dude like you, like literally just crying because you're so grateful that you have God in your life. Now I'm like thinking, holy shit, you know, I got to get right with God now too. Clearly, if you can do that. So that's like, and that's the step I'm on right now. Well, you know, it's, it's like, uh, I always tell people, I, cr I cry every day because like, I'm so grateful of like what he's done in, in my heart, like, especially my heart, because I had... I had so much pain. I bro, mean, two, people, two years ago when I met you, it, like, you could still tell you were a killer, bro. Like, no joke. You know? I was still wanting to punch people when they were looking no, at me I'll, the wrong I'll, way. So. so this is funny. When I actually, I actually did go to his house, and not at 3 a.m. I think I met him in the middle of, like, 5 a.m. Yeah, or something five. like that. And, like, when I got out, I wasn't associating with people like that. No joke. Like, when we, we did our, we walked around your whole neighborhood after we worked out. And I remember thinking in your head, and I was like thinking, literally, I was like, this fool's still crazy. You know what I'm saying? I remember thinking, like, that's too crazy for me because I do not, so I, I don't put myself around that shit out here on the streets, you know? And now to see the transformation in less than two years out here when you've already been out is, is like crazy. You know what I mean? It makes me jealous. Like, I'm like, damn, I need to get my, step my game up with it. You know, uh, that's why people don't realize how much, like, that's why I'm so grateful because the, the whole, okay, so the whole gang, prison in Mexico, all that stuff, but... What I went through as a child, like they don't talk they about don't, that too, because there's a lot of people that have nothing to do with drugs or prison that been through stuff like that, and they can't even overcome that. Like you've had to overcome so much shit; it's insane. You know what I'm and, saying? You know, uh, he used to literally like drown me in, in cold water, and I would pass out, and then he would take me out and do it all over again. And then when he would take me to public pools, he would tell me, you know, jump in, and I already knew he was gonna let me drown, so I would be like, nah. And, and, and I would feel a little bit safe because we were out in public, you know, but he would be like, do it. Or when we get home. So I would just be like, oh, I'm just going to jump in. <laughs> so I would just, I would jump in and I would start drowning. But he, it affected me so much because he did it from, I was four all the way to I was nine. And like. And who was he again? My mom's brother. Okay. Um, he would lock me in this dark room for hours. And I was like so afraid of darkness when I, just as a grown man yeah even being a gangster i was afraid of darkness I'm so <laughs> i slept with a like night light <laughs> <laughs> i was afraid to leave my feet uncovered at night yeah. uh i was afraid of water i don't do water he still is fun, fun fact. <laughs> so when water. i first when i remember when we first started talking i was way out on the like because he's on the west side or something i was like way out there by that water when i was going out there so i happened to hit him up i was like yo i'm about to accept the water park right by my house water yeah park. you want to come out here and his first word <laughs> he's like i used to get drowned when i was 11 years old i don't do water i'm like I don't uh, do I'll call you later. Then. I guess I'll see you later, bro. I don't do water. <laughs> I, you know, uh, my wife is lucky. I even shower, so, <laughs> so I don't do water, man. It, it did a number on me, man. It was it was torture, you know. It was it was rape, uh, molestation, being locked in that room for hours, drowned. I mean, by the time I was ten years old, I was that's why I was on the street, like looking for blood. I wanted to get even with people, and I. Uh, I started hurting people on the streets. You know, I got involved with gangs right away, and that was like your family that you didn't have, huh? Yeah, you know, and uh, every gang leader loves a broken kid. You know, uh, uh, he For gets to uh, use him in whatever way he can, and and that's what what happened. You know, 
I robbed a lot of people. I, I did a lot of stuff for older guys, and I did a time, and I was always doing time for somebody else because it, it was crazy. I was always with older guys. Yeah. So, uh, man, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, people don't realize how grateful I am because of, like, he, him changing my heart and taking all that away from that day. And this is going to be, like, my whole life. I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm perfect now. No, like, I, this is going to be training for the rest of my life. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm, I'm happy that I'm actually able to rationalize with things now. <laughs> I'm happy that my emotions are not making my, my decisions, you know what I mean? It, it's... It's, it's, everything's changed in me because before it was just like, I would beat you up and I would ask questions later. <laughs> it's just, it's the way I handled everything because that's what I, how I survived in, in prison for 17 years. You know what I mean? Like, it was like, yeah, survival of the fittest. You know, yeah, there's, there's no way fans are butts in there. You know, Mexico taught me so much being so young and being in prison over there and being so far away. And then I, I got so addicted to, to drugs while I was out there because. What is, in the Mexican prisons, I mean, there's, there ain't shit for rehabilitation in Arizona, but I mean, there's got to be clearly nothing in Mexico prisons for that, right? You're just sitting there and <laughs> clearly like gangbanging there's, politics and all stuff. All you and, do is get high, drink. I mean, I always tell people, if you want an idea of what Mexican prison was back then, to watch that movie with uh, Mel Gibson, Get the Gringo. Really? Uh, if you watch that movie, you'll, you'll get like an insight of what, what Mexican prison was back then and Kingpins, how they lived, everything. Yeah. It, it uh... Like I tell people, when I got there, I had my own cell. I paid for it. Uh, I had carpet. I had a big screen TV. Damn. I was walking around with Nike windbreaker suits with my gold chains. Like yeah. I, I, I thought I was like, you know, my head was like this big. But I thought that was the coolest shit. Like me, I have you know Jordans, a fat, a huge ass chain, Oakley sunglasses and stuff, and I like thought I was like doing things in the world. And it's like it, it's just such... it's crazy because we get used to like living like that. And I risked <laughs> and I risked so many tickets for that, bro. Like I I was um in my last year to the gate, I had those Oakleys, you know, and I was like I didn't want to give them up. And this lieutenant it was this a funny story just to show how much of shit that I used to be. This lieutenant, you know, when you're running the yard, you can do whatever the hell you want. You know what I'm saying? So I'll come out to chow and wear Oakleys, fat ass chain, mm -hmm. Jordans, whatever, shirt untucked. And this lieutenant one time was like, uh, where'd you get those Oakleys? And I was like, uh, who are you? She's like, I'm a lieutenant. I was like, uh, you haven't asked them like who I am or anything like that? Like, I have Oakleys. She's like, I don't know who you think you are, but you don't have those. And I'm like, I didn't get into it for like five minutes. And she ends up telling me like, I'm going to check if these aren't on your property file and you're getting a ticket. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, cool. I'm like, I give them the Oakleys. I'm like, just so you know, I'll have those back tomorrow. She gives me a ticket. The next day, I go to the property officer, do my thing, get my glasses back, come out to Chow again the exact same night, and she's working double shift on a swing shift again yeah. the next time. So I get three tickets, and I lose like five months from going home just for the, the stupid ass Oakleys, just because I want to wear Oakleys on the yard. For pride. Because I want to wear Oakleys on the yard. Five months yeah. away from going home. You know, that's why, like, uh, I'm just, like, I'm so happy that I found Jesus because, like, it's taught me to feel. I, I was so self centered for so long. I really thought that money was, like, everything and, and, Sorry. When, when I got into my like my mid twenties that I started like moving a lot of weight, I, I really thought that I had found like your calling my life, life, my yeah. calling. Like, oh, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sell kilos for the rest of my life. I have a Mexican restaurant. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm living like the soprano life. You know what I mean? And uh, it was crazy because every day somebody was either trying to kill me or rob me, trying to kill me or rob me, or it, it was just back and forth all the time. And I remember one day, they, they literally tried to kill me, I want to say seven or eight times in one day. And that's the day I was like, you know what? I'm going to move to Arizona because -uh. over there, nobody knows me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, that's what you do when you have a lot of problems. You just move away and you're going to be good wherever you, you land. You know? yeah. But now I, I came out here and I, I started on the same, same thing because... For one, I didn't. There's a strip club here on every corner, so I wasn't used to that life in Chicago. There, oh, yeah. you go to like the outskirts to go really? to the strip clubs, yeah, yeah. And here, they had them on every corner. And then I started, uh, you know, living with DMX, and, and I became part of the Rough Ride, Phoenix Rough I was Riders. I with them on the, in Kaiba. So, oh, yeah. like, started riding bikes, and then now I'm riding bikes. I'm, I'm dating strippers, um, selling coke, and, and it was like back to square one again. You yeah, know doing I mean? the Mexico shit in Arizona. <laughs> was, yeah. So, it, it, and it was constant just, I, I wanted to change, but, but I really didn't know how. I, I really didn't even know where to start. Uh, you know, I would sober up. Uh, I've been to every rehab here in Arizona, <laughs> um, 90 days, six months, even a year. Uh, I would sober up, then I would go right back. 
And I just didn't know how to do it. And that's one thing that now with like my daily like routine, I mean, I get up at three in the morning, I, I sit down, I just complete. Yeah, I want to talk about your routine. Talk about your routine. I just, routine's huge for me, but in prison or not prison. I know, but it, I get up with like 2.45, three in the morning. Um, I, I go downstairs, I sit in the dark and just, I talk to God and just, I just tell him, you know, thank you, whatever. If I messed up the day before, I, I talk about it. I, he's like, he's like my, my, my boy, my friend, you know what I mean? And I let everything out right there. Uh, after that, I start reading scripture. I start reading the Bible. Does uh, he talk back to you when you're doing that? Like, I'm being serious. I, I feel it, man. That's one thing I feel like I'm missing. I, like, I've tried to pray and I'm like, I feel it's like, I don't feel anything. It's weird. Well, I, 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 I feel it because like, I always tell people like, you gotta, you can't just do it one day and then like uh, do it whenever like you're, you're experiencing problems. You gotta do it like every day because you get better at it and you, you start connecting more with him and you start like getting to know him and he gets to know, like, it's a whole relationship thing. I tell people it's real it's, and it's some powerful stuff. Yeah. Uh, the, the first time I spoke to him when I told him, okay, you got my attention. Like what, what do you made want you do me that? to do? What made you do that? I was just so, I was and this so is back tired. last November? Yeah, I was so tired, man. Um, my wife was ready to leave me. She, she. I remember you told me you were going to go. Yeah, she, she just couldn't take it no more. I was, I, I had so much rage, man. I was, there, there must have been like 50 holes in my house. Uh, just, it was just constant, like, distrust. I didn't trust her. I didn't trust nobody. Yeah. Uh, I just, I was still a lot hurt. So, Things were going, everything else was going good. My fitness client, all that stuff, like my brand, everything was going fine, but I was bad. This was bad. So I came downstairs and I just, I dropped to my knees and I, I started crying and I just told them, all right, so you got my attention. I've never been a Bible thumper. I, not, I, even do, I didn't even do it in prison. It's a but, prison term for sure. But, yeah. but like, you got my attention. Like, what do you want? And then, I don't know, I just felt it in my heart that I really had to kind of confess everything that I had done in life, everything that I wasn't proud of, uh, just pretty much just release everything. Like a step, almost. That, yeah, you know, just release everything that, it's hard to catch a train when you're running with a bunch of bags, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's so, a good one. That's a good so one. So like, I, I just That's let him. That's a real him, clip right there. <laughs> <laughs> I just let him have everything. And man, I, I got up and I was like, man, that's like the best pre-workout I've ever had. Shut like, up. Like yeah, that for real? I got up and I was like, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go train now. No way. So I ran in the garage, and then once I ran into the garage, it, it, it happened again. I fell down to my knees again, and, and that's What do you mean it happened again? I just felt that, I can't really explain it, man, because Try. every every person's experience is gonna be different, yeah. but you actually have to have faith and believe in it to actually experience it, because like, I I don't need no more proof. I, I, I'm sold. The I don't way, need proof after seeing you now, but I want to, like, I'm literally no, curious like, myself the way, about this The shit. way my heart feels today, like, people don't realize you're not supposed to just have, like, peace one day and then be at war. Peace one day, then be at war. No, you're supposed to have peace throughout your whole life. So that's one thing that I've been learning. It's like every day it gets, not every day is a good day, but it's going to be okay because... It, it's promised. It's just going to be okay. And you, and have, you have to be day. okay with that. And that's the, the piece that I found now is that that's why, like, I'm smiling all the time. I cry all the time. And I'm like, man, here I thought that I was, like, this big, tough gangster. And, and I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> like, I'm a child of God. And, like, the, he today that I know my purpose of what I'm supposed to do, like, it makes it even that much, like, sweeter, the joy, the just being grateful. I always tell people, if, you, if you're not grateful every day, you're not crying about how grateful you are, then you're missing something. You're missing something because, man, we're put here for, for a purpose. Everybody has a purpose. That's why people go through things, you know what I mean? And, and there's just they're storms. You're, you're going you're gonna, to you know, walk through them. You just have to have faith and, and just believe. And, and that's why my routine is so important, and that's when... That's one thing that I, I, I'm gonna teach in my, in my mentorship program, that it's, you have to, just like you take a vitamin every day, just like you take a creatine every day, like you, you have to do certain things to get your body right. And that's everything, emotionally, physically, everything, rationally, just everything, it, it all counts because you can't have a, what does it say, a Ferrari body with a Volkswagen motor. Yeah, that's real. <laughs> 
So, you know, my routine is so important. Um, after I finish reading the Bible, I go straight into the garage. I have my, my gym in the garage. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that. And, and I train. Um, I distance myself a lot from the from the gyms just because. I was just gonna ask you that because I was gonna say I don't think you I don't even think I've seen you go to the gym anymore. What's nah, up with that? It's just um, it, it used to be a big like ego feeder for me back in the day. I, I I lift pretty heavy. I'm pretty strong, so like I would grab the 150s and I would be like yeah. showing off and and I my head would get like this big and you know my wife I love her to death like she's the only one that where's like, she at right now. She's uh, where, I dropped out. She's getting some Botox done. <laughs> Girl, I'm blasting shit, <laughs> Mrs. Savage. <laughs> yeah, she's, I'm not uh, saying shit to Miss Savage. I want no trouble with you, man. <laughs> yeah, she's getting some done. She's in Scottsdale, but uh, that's my road dog. That's my best friend. Like she, she calls me out on on like everything, and I strongly like I I, I know I know that God built her to deal with me because no one my longest relationship was three months yeah that's how long they were they they would be like man this dude is crazy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm getting out of here like and my wife stuck it out like praying praying and praying and just stuck it out now she's like man it was worth sticking around like <laughs> like you're a good dude now yeah. you know and she always told me though she's like even when i first she always been big on god or yeah, okay. yeah, she 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 got saved way before me, like before she even met me, and um, she would tell me she she one day she called me to the treadmill, and she's like, "Hey, Corn," and I was like, "What?" This is where we were just friends. She's like, "What is wrong, strong?" And I was like, "You go from wrong to strong." Yeah. And she's like, "Nah, it doesn't. It's not you." And I was like, "Shut up!" And I walked <laughs> away. It was my ego was still really yeah, big, you know what sure. I mean? But she would always like. Like just check me they and call you on your own shit. Yeah, and, and man, I, I love her to you death for like that. that for sure. I, I love her to death for that. That's dope. Yeah. Man. So I I didn't know you got out and started doing all that trouble in Arizona. Then at first, um, that's crazy. So, but help me out with the God thing. So now when you're when you're praying at night or in the morning, are you like do you legit just talk to him and do you hear back? Because like my sponsor says the same thing. Like he has a full on conversation and I'm like, I pray all day. Like right now I was praying. That's what he says. He's like, oh, he's like, I just, I, we just, we I, just you talk just, all You're day. just talking to him like a friend, man. To tell you the truth, it's it's people don't realize that they people other people that are afraid to say God, they'll, they'll use terms like meditation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, let's let's meditate. Okay, let, let, I'm talking to God. Or other people use uh, your higher power. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they don't want... It's almost like you're afraid to say God. <laughs> yeah, for, oh, absolutely, for <laughs> and sure. And I'm like, I'm not afraid because after surviving what I survived and what I went through, the trauma, everything, I'm telling you, I've been to psychiatrists, counselors, shock therapy, hypnosis, everything. Nobody did for me what, what Jesus did for me and what God has been doing in my life. Like, I'm st I still sit back sometimes and I'm like, Wow. Like, really? and listen, and I, it, the craziest part about that is like you're doing, you're, you've always been doing well, but it's like you said what he's done for you, and it's like that was last November. So what is that, eight, nine months or some shit mm -hmm. like that? And you like you live in the same crib, you drive the same car, and like so the fact that you could feel like that much gratitude for stuff that you've done when you're like, and I mean I could argue you're technically living the same life you were living nine months ago before then, yeah. but just that you found that gratitude and like found well, him is crazy. Because I have peace and joy in my heart now, and it's like and I'm getting here. The reason I'm getting so into this religion stuff is because for me I need help with it, and a, and a lot of people it's a huge thing to me. Like I don't have get any hate comments on my entire channel. The only time I got a few is when we talked about this God thing. I just told those dudes like. Bye, don't watch my channel. You know what I'm saying? Because there's some people like that. They have that such a big ego. They can't give praise to God or anyone, whoever it is. So like, I'm, I'm being genuine about these questions because I feel like it's going to help a ton I'm of people. I'm sold, man. I'm, like I said, I'm sold just because I know what he did for me. And, and that's what I tell people. Like, your walk is going to be your walk with him. Like, I can't tell you how your walk's going to be because it's going to be you and him, you know? And the best thing, the best advice I could tell you is like, listen, listen. God gave you two ears, two eyes, one mouth. So why are we always talking? <laughs> Why are you not listening more? Why are you not watching more? Talking to me? You know, no, I'm yeah, not talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Robin, you're not allowed to be no, on the yeah. show. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you know, like, that's why, like, they even use it in AA. They tell you to take the con out of your ears and put it in your mouth. Yeah. Like, stop. Listen. That's why, like, it's the best, the best thing for me is that now I, like, I rationalize. I think about stuff and I'm like, okay, well, if I do that, it's because I'm, I'm, I'm making a decision with my emotion. Okay. Not with facts. And that's, uh, it's one of the biggest gifts I, I believe that I have now, because before 
I was I was uh, an emotional wreck. Like all I, all I did was make decisions on emotions, and it cost me you know years of my life. It cost me a lot of relationship. My kids. Uh, by the way, uh, God already put four of five of my kids back in my life. No, so. I was just gonna ask you about that. Yeah, man, I'm pretty happy. My son's back in my life. Uh, man, to see him, 25 years old, uh, he wants to work out with me. Uh, no um, way. It, it's been, I, it's been a blessing. Don't just... make me cry. Get it, bro. I was about to say, I'm surprised you haven't cried yet. Dude, what the hell? We're like 30 minutes into this uh, shit. What's going on here? No, man, I'm I'm happy, man. He's he's done so much for me, and that's why, like, I'm I'm a straight soldier for him. Like, I tell everybody, every everybody that I try to like I encounter, I just be like, hey, what's up? <laughs> And you want to know what's crazy is like the, how I feel like it's I gave it so much validity is because like, dude, when we, we were texting that day and it was like you like were calling me out on an exact shit that like nobody knows. And you're like, I know I feel you. And I'm like, I'm I like, we're, I'm you. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Dude? Like, this shit is real. Like, it tripped me out. You know what I mean? It was, it was a curse. We're the same as, yeah. I, I feel other people's pain. Um. I just I literally texted me out of the blue saying that to me. And like the exact thoughts I was having was what he was texting me. And I was just like sitting, I was like, what the hell? You know, it was like, and it was like the day after you told me, like really, really found God. And I was just like, holy shit. Let me look at you, bro. Yeah, it, it, uh, it makes, breaks me down sometimes, but like, um, it keeps me really humble, you know, cause uh, I feel people's pain. And uh, there's a lot of pain in this world. And uh, it's just a lot of people just need love. Like it, it's just, you know, and people don't realize that's why like I'm so grateful about my life now because man, he he completely transformed everything. Even even my relationship with like my dog is like <laughs> day and night. You know, I, I spend time with him. I don't mean to laugh at you when you're crying, but that's it's, funny. It's my it's my it's my yeah. you know, he's a little English he's bulldog. Little tank, so like yeah. he he's so funny and I spend time I sit down and I spend time with him and I talk, talk to my to dog him. and shit, bro. Yeah. And I chill with my it's dog. It's like you learn to have like these relationships that are like guided by God. So like there's so much more like fruitful. Yeah, they, they're more you you learn so much from them. So it's like, man, I'm just I'm just grateful. I'm really I really am. And, and it's all all in his name, all in his glory. Like I give him everything. No, nothing of this is, is me. Like it's all him. Yeah. yeah. Dude, it's crazy. And you were saying that and it's just like. It just fires me up. And like I said, it makes me know that, like it's possible because like I had this excuse that I couldn't believe in God. Like how could God do it? And just my cousin passed away. And it's like when you see stuff like you and the shit that you've been through and you can find God again, it's like, what, how the hell can I not? You know what I'm saying? And well, I'm doing myself a disservice just saying that. We always want to we always want to blame somebody else for like our pains. We always want to blame, you know, just we always it feels better to blame than to, you know, really be, you know, uh kind of, I guess you could say, man up and, and face reality. And that's one thing that Mrs. Savage, you know, told me one day, she was like, either you're going to stop acting like this or you're not. Tell me right now, because I'm not going to live like this because I was very jealous. I was very jealous, very controlling. Um, I always thought she was up to something. And how, how are you supposed to treat somebody that you supposedly love like that? Yeah. You know what I mean? You have to trust them. You have all these. It's not even your job to be worried about that. Let, let that, let that, that's his job. You know, she has to answer to him. And finally, you know, I gave it to God and I started really, really praying about it. And, you know, it started to, to change. And the relationship that her and I have now is like, that's my road dog. That's my best friend. Like, I literally miss, miss her so much when I'm away from her. So I made it, like, my priority, my job for me to be able to work from home because I want to be around her all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, I absolutely feel like I was cheated from not being around her for 40 years because I'm 45, you know what I mean? That's right. And, and so now I want to be around her all the time. And God has taught me how to love my wife, how to treat her, how to trust her. How to like be when you more say empathetic? He's talking, how does he teach you? He teaches you through scripture. That's why okay. it's so important for you to to read to get on a routine of reading. You know, you don't just go to the Bible and start reading it from the first page to the end. No, you start. You know, you 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 start. You go through pages. That's why, like our our wrong to strong mentorship program. Um, John Humphrey right now is designing the whole package and everything. Uh, we're gonna have a whole pretty much like a blueprint. This is this is the books that you're gonna need. This is how you're gonna you know you're gonna read it. These are the steps. We're gonna have uh, we have a Zoom 
uh, every Wednesday at 5, 5 p.m. Arizona, 7 p.m. Chicago, where all the guys meet up. And it's almost like like a mastermind, you know how they call those meetings? Yeah. But these are all God men that want to learn and want to get better. And, and, and that's what it is, is, you know, we disciple, we're discipling people to, to teach them. Because remember, a lot of these dudes that grew up in these neighborhoods have never had peace in their heart. They've never had joy. They've never had a lot of these emotions and feelings so you, you need to be discipled to be able to, to know what's going to happen with this walk and, and how God is going to use you and how you need to stay in Scripture and read and learn and study, listen to the Word. I always tell people it's the five, you got to have that strong grip on that bar or when it gets up to 500 pounds, you ain't going to be able to lift it. And you walk around with an with a easy grip, somebody can knock that Bible right off your hand. So like you gotta have a strong grip on that on that word because it, it, it's like I always tell people the the Ephesians six where it talks about the armor of God like it's one of my like I love it because you know I'm a straight soldier so like you know the the breastplate the helmet the shield the sword the boots you know the belt it it's just it it's true we're we're in a spiritual warfare and people don't realize you know I always. I always thought that the whole like devil thing was like a joke and it wasn't true. And my wife could be like, she was there with me. So when I first, first started my walk, like wanting, I wanted to go to church. I wanted to change my life. I wanted to be different. I told my wife, hey, I feel like going to church today. And she was like, cool, what church do you want to go to? I was like, I used to go to that fire and water church that's across the street from the federal halfway house. And she's all right, let's go. So we jumped, we jumped in the Range Rover and we got on the 51 and we were jamming out to Christian music, uh, you know, laughing. And I, I was crying because I was like, I was getting like ready to go there. And I, I was scared. I was like, just an emotion. Like I was, I was afraid. Mm -hmm. Well, we get there and this Camaro pulls up next to us, a souped up Camaro, cause you could hear it all blacked out. Black when you people are gonna think I'm crazy, but my wife is there as my witness. <laughs> all right, all blacked out with red, red trim, and you could hear that dude had to put some money into the motor because you could hear it. Mm -hmm. He pulls up. I'm trying to get over to get off the exit to go to the church. He's not letting me, so I speed up because we got a, the Range Rover was a supercharged, mm -hmm. so you know you got some speed in it too. So he speeds up, doesn't let me over. I slow down. He slows down. I speed up. He speeds up, and I'm like, what's going on here? Finally, I hit my brakes, and he just takes off. The license plate, I, I, uh, it said like a Satan name, you know what I mean? It, it, it was on there. No way. I looked at my wife. She looked at me. I got the goosebumps, and I was like, wow. And I got off, and I was like, you see? You see, like, people, if I tell that story to somebody, they won't believe me. But I just seen with my own eyes that I was getting attacked spiritually. Like, and, and if I say that, people will be like, oh, whatever, it's not true. But I'm like, oh, but you believe in aliens. <laughs> 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 I'm like, okay, all right. So, yeah, that's a good point. You know, it, so it's like, I, I, know, I know that he was not happy, man, because I think a lot of people don't believe in uh, the devil or, or like in evil stuff because they've never really seen it. I mean, I was right next to him. I so do you believe him. that there's like a devil and a, and a God in existence every day and the devil's yeah. trying to bring you down? And like, like, yeah. Okay. You know, I, if they asked me uh, uh, if I spoke to, to young JC, what would I say? And uh, I, I, would, I would honestly say uh, to, to listen, like, listen and don't, don't listen to, the, to your mind because your mind tells you a lot of lies, tells you, it talks about pain, it talks about past, it talks about who betrayed you, it talks about all those stuff, and, and you, what you need to listen to is your heart, because that's how God talks to you, through your heart. And, you know, when you get better at it, you start to, to feel that you could have those conversations with him, like how you say it, how your friends have full-blown conversations. I do the same thing, like, I'll just talk to him and be like, man, you know, give me wisdom, you know, teach me, show me. It's, it's crazy because I always tell people, be careful what you pray for. Because he's not going to give it to you the way you think you want it. He's going to give it to you the way that he knows you need it. And, 
and, and that's, that's the thing is that if you pray for patience, <laughs> he's going he's to probably give you something that's going to drive you a crazy. A lesson that's going to drive you nuts, yeah. You know, and, and you're going to have to learn, learn. To, to, be, to be patient. That's like, what's that saying? Of, you can give a man fish or, or teach him how to fish or whatever shit goes? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a, a lifetime walk, um, a, lot of, a lot of training, a lot of discipline. But like I said... Uh, I honestly believe that men, especially in this time right now, need it, need uh, to be physically, spiritually, emotionally, and rationally fit. Um, sometimes they don't know how to do it. So, um, you know, I'm going to, every person I encounter, I'm going to try and tell them what, what God has done in my life, what, how Jesus has changed my life. Just, you know, I just feel that I need to because if, this was given to me for free. Why wouldn't I share it? And that's that's one of the biggest things that I, I have like learned now is like I'm not afraid to tell people, hey, you know, Jesus loves you. And they'll look at me and I'll be like, yeah, for real. And they, <laughs> sometimes I get the dirty looks, you know, sometimes, you know, I have people talk crap, but I really don't care because like I said, at the end of the day, I'm the one that's like walking around with this smile. My cheeks hurt sometimes <laughs> smiling so much, you yeah. know. And, and I have, I have my days, man, but uh, I right away, when I'm feeling a certain way, I, I see God right away. I go straight to Scripture because I already know what it does to me, what it what works. So I'm not questioning So that's nothing. what you do if you're having some shit going on, you go to the Bible? Yep. And how do you pick what to read? I just, I pray before I even start. You know, I, I, I give them everything. I, I tell them my shortcomings, everything, and I open it up and... He always guides me, man. The beautiful thing about the word is it's the truth, one. And second, that if you read a verse one day, it's going to say something to you. And if you read it another day, it's going to say something different to you because it's going to speak to you. It's the living word. It's going to speak to you on what you, what you need to hear that day. And that's the beautiful thing. I'm, I'm in love with this walk just because uh, I know how I feel every time uh, I read, I study, uh, I mean, I love Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing you like that, bro. It's hilarious. I want to just, you know, I want to wear shirts that say it. I want to wear shorts that say it, <laughs> hats. And I just want to tell people, like, man, you, you, don't, you don't know what you're missing. Like, uh, you don't, my, not, I understand now living life to the fullest is through him. Because now, like, I feel like I just started living. Like, uh, I told my wife, like, man. Uh, they start taking pictures. Uh, it, it, it's been like a, a trip just to see. Yeah, the I want to talk about that. Like how you you're, when you finally feel like you found your calling and stuff like that. What is it? It's just it's, you seem like a different human being, completely like a black and white different human being. Well, I just I feel that you know I'm going to school to to uh, pursue like I want to be a pastor one day. You know, not I'm not saying right now, but one day. You know, when God calls me, but I, I wanna travel i want to tell people about what he's done in my life i, I want to go to all those bad areas those level four yards uh all those prisons um mexico germany south africa i want to go everywhere and just kind of just tell everybody what jesus has done in my life and how he's changed me and how like you don't have to live in in like pain no more you don't have to you don't have to live like that because that's how i lived my whole life so like i know that it's like, it's either you're going to live like that your whole life or you're going to be happy and have peace. Like, why wouldn't you? You have nothing to lose. That's what I mean. Why wouldn't you give it a try? That's what I told you. Like, yeah. it's like, why wouldn't you try it? I, I mean, you have nothing to lose. You've been like feeling like, like crap your whole life. Why wouldn't you try something to see if you would feel, if it would do the, pro, you know, fix the problem? Make you feel better, yeah. So, yeah, man. Damn, bro. You're a miracle. <laughs> Nah, just JC, it's crazy. Man. No, no, but what you say? And then what did you say to me the other day? Because you said you thought you had like it all figured out when you're, but like now you like God. Uh, I don't, you didn't use the saying about like God's writing your paychecks now. What you said like you didn't feel full, fulfilled until you like found God. Like money and shit doesn't matter anything now with God. No, and it's it was you know I I was I was still a little like full of myself back in the day. So I was trying to like make money and, and get that big mansion and still like. You know floss and and stuff like that and everything's changing now like um my my biggest thing is that i want to work so i could help more people um i wanna 
I, I want to build my company so I could, you know, one day have a men's home. You know, I, I want to bring gang members from all over the world to get discipled, uh, maybe like a year program. I have a lot of things that he's put in my heart that uh, I know it's going to take, take time to build, but it's just I, I feel it's my calling. I feel that um, I have to share everything that I've been through, uh, everything that I went through, and, and just share it with, with whoever I can because, you know, we live right now in a time where a lot of the men have kind of like thrown in the towel, towel you know what I mean? They, they go to work, they come home, and they, they lay on the couch and watch TV, and, and, and that's they drink, it. They drink Friday, Saturday, yeah, Sunday. They, they think that that's it, that's life, and, and, and it's not. You know, you're supposed to live life to the fullest through God. You know, he, it's, we're here as ambassadors. We're here to, like, represent him. We're like, he, he blesses us when we live for him. Yeah. So, like, uh, you, you ha there's so much more, and that's why it's so important to, like, eat right, you know, train, uh, study, all these things to, to stay sharp, man. You know, I have a client that's 74 years old, and, and he got into the best shape of his life. And he's, he's well off. You know, he has his own business and everything. And he came up to me, he's like, JC, if I would have done this, you know, 20, you know, 40 years ago, he's like, I would have like been a billionaire now. And I'm like, well, you kind of look at it the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you know, it, it, it's one of the pieces that you fix, you know, it, it, then you need to, you know, you need spiritual, physical, you need all those aspects to get better. And that's one thing that I'm going to really enjoy is teaching these, these men how to be men again, men yeah. of God, and and just small stuff, you know, habits, all that stuff, things that I've done that I know work because I, I stick on a schedule. Like, I, I mean, I've sent you my calendar before. If I'm not done, every hour counts. So if I read the Bible for an hour. So if I'm not done, then I move to the next hour. What's next? My YouTube channel. Okay, boom. Uh, my social media post, uh, working on my webpage, uh, my book, uh, my clothing line, my supplement line. Everything has to be like boom, boom. I have to spend enough time on each one and not stop and focus on one thing because like I just, I, I get, I have to be doing a lot of things so I can stay busy. And now having God in my life, it's like, it's all for him. It's all his glory, his name. So it makes it even more sweeter. Like it's just, Damn. it's more rewarding. How much of yeah, let's go over. So your new fitness program that you're going to have launching and how much of it is fitness and is it, how much of it's God and t let's go over that a little bit. Like what are people going to get out of that and stuff? Uh, it's going to be ready by October 5th. Uh, we'll launch it and it's like a mental. What else is October 5th? Tell them. <laughs> uh, the show is going to air Locked Up Abroad on the National Geographic channel. And I think the uh, uh, Hulu and the uh, Disney Network. Uh, I think they're going to have it, but my episode is going to be the first episode to air Damn. Uh, here in, in America, October 5th at 6 p.m., I believe. Um, yeah, a lot of good stuff. <laughs> that day, I'll launch my mentorship program. So the mentorship program is going to pretty much be based on what I said, like spiritually. You know, um, like I said, a lot of people are afraid to say God. So spiritually, physically, emotionally, and rationally, like... There's the big four, uh, and I'm, I'm going to work with them pretty much, you know, showing them what 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 a routine does for you. What uh, A lot of people that have been to prison, like, they have that pack. The routine is, like, boom. Damn. Physical part, boom. But emotional, rational, <laughs> we need to work on those. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, it's going to be a combination of, uh, uh, you know, just training people how to do it and being disciplined and... It's really cool because I got to work with one of my clients. He's a professor, and he's, like, super smart. Uh, throughout the years, he taught me the difference between an educator and a teacher and and just, like, me learning from him so much. I call him Big Dog, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, People used to call me that. He's an engineer. Like, he builds stuff. So, like, he, he was he's, like, started helping me with putting all this together. And, man, um, I uh, he was, like, one day he was, like, JC, uh, I need to get sober. And I was like, I think I can help you. And he's like, yeah. I was like, yeah. So I went and I dropped him off at an AA meeting over there on 43rd uh, Avenue in Dunlap. And um, he's been sober ever since. No like, way. Yeah. Like, just just straight, like, from one day to another. And he had been drinking for, like, 40-plus years. Wow, that's cool. Like, and just got sober and, like, spiritual and, and just everything. And he's like, you know, he motivates me. I motivate him. And... And that's that's what people don't realize is that that's where the true like gift comes that God gives you. It's like 
people get motivated, they see you, and you know, uh, they're grateful. They're grateful because th they know that if you could do it, they could do it. So, you know, that's where the, the, grateful, the being grateful, the grateful, like being me, me feeling grateful for having people like him in my life and, and like you and just good people, man. And, and you, know, you know, if we were up to bad, we wouldn't be friends, you know, we would have other kind of friends. Absolutely. You know, uh, so like, you're, you're not doing too bad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I feel like that. <laughs> Anything else you want to give to everybody, man, or motivate some people in prison, or one last final message, whatever, just drop some stuff, bro. I like, uh, this has been so awesome, dude, bro, just, seriously. Just, man, you know, just give them, a, give them a chance, you know, drop down to your knees, take that pride away, and, and just, you know, talk to them, uh, listen, and, and just sit there and just, let him guide you. Uh, you know, uh, we're meant to come home, and that's how I feel. Like, I finally came home, and, and now I get to do what uh, he wanted me to do this whole time. There you go, man. Thank you, bro. This is unreal. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Roll Call with Chappie. Man, dude, uh, JC is the man. Go check out his YouTube channel. Um, Dude, I'm, I'm speechless, bro. And I don't get speechless too often. Thank you again. Cry for us one more time, bro. Will you please? I love you guys. Big ass gangster I'm crying good. in here. I love it, bro. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe wherever you get your podcast and leave us some feedback. We would love to know what you think. You can find everything discussed in this episode and more in our show notes below or petermeyeroff.com. I am Peter Meyeroff, and you've been listening to the Roll Call with Chappie podcast.